Are you ready for the, for the question? I know you are. When I have a many faceted project to accomplish, usually at work, when there is pressure to get it done quickly, the moving part of the moving center becomes a tyrant, demanding that it dominate the intellectual part of the center. This means rather than sit down and calmly make a wise plan of action, the moving part of the moving center demands immediate action be taken with as little thinking as possible. It is strong and very pushy. After some action is taken, the intellectual part steps into the picture and says, if you would have thought this through, you would have saved yourself some time. It almost always happens this way. To think of a good plan sounds like the answer. However, the intellectual part of the moving center is absolutely controlled by the moving part, and to make a plan is impossible. The intellectual part has tried to do this, and it is overwhelmed by the moving part to the point that the intellectual part is jammed up and cannot think. It couldn't put a plan together unless its life depended on it. What can I do to overcome this? Or do I accept it and realize I cannot do? It seems to be wrong work of centers, but how does one make right work of centers? Is there something to do to strengthen the intellectual part of the moving center? This probably sounds to a lot of you like mumbo jumbo. No, it doesn't. Sounds like what? Sounds like me. Sounds like... <laughs> <laughs> so it's your question, don't you? <laughs> I can relate to it. Yeah. I can't. I don't do that. That's not the way my mind works. Those thoughts would clutter my little tiny brain. My little tiny brain reduces things to such a simple scale, to such simplicity, that it's almost unbelievable. I read something like this, and I, I, I can barely even read it. I can barely stay with it long enough to read it. I just go instantaneously to the bottom line. Okay, so what I get from this is the moving center, the moving part of the moving center, which of course is the most mechanical part, the little part of the machine, the little eyes. That's where all the little eyes are. The little eyes are doing things, and I can't stop them. That's what I get out of that. Do you have any advice? Yes, my advice is don't let the little eyes have their way. That's my advice. Don't go with the little eyes. Just that simple. Simple, right? There you go. And that's how my mind works. Don't go with the little eyes. So now she's observed what they do, what they say. All right, well, great. There you go. You've observed them all. Now don't go with them. Well, but how do you do that? Just don't do it. Just stop it. Well, what does that mean? That's what it means. Stop. When all of that stuff starts coming up, when all of those voices start screaming, when all of that, well, you have to do this. You have to, instead of arguing, instead of going through all that, what I do is I just stop. I fold my arms and I say, well, that's it. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing anything. I do nothing. And it's demanding, screaming. Well, you have to do something. It has to be done right now. <laughs> you got the wrong man. That's not how I operate. Kill me. But that's not how it's going to go. I'm not going to do that. So that's how I handle it. I just don't get into this big argument with little eyes. I don't argue with little eyes. What's there to talk to them about? There's, they, there's no way they can understand this work. They don't have the capacity to understand this work, so there's no sense in trying to, to introduce them to it. They have their job to do. Let them do it. But when they try to run things, it's like, I don't argue with them. That's not their job. So I don't let them do it. I recommend, that's what I recommend. I don't recommend going through all of this mumbo jumbo and I don't do all that. I don't divide the centers up. I look at it like this. There's little eyes and there's big eyes. Where do the little eyes live? Well, we know that the work teaches that they live in the mechanical parts, the small mechanical parts of centers. And we know that there, there's, there's this center and that center and this center and that center. But for me, it's all reduced to this. Inside of me, there are many different eyes. Some of them always lead down to negative states. And a few of them have bigger ideas and they can lead up to higher energies and better states. If I follow them, I always end up in a better place. If I follow the little eyes, I always end up in a worse place. Where do I want to be? I want to be in a better place. So I follow the better eyes. Is that too simple for you? Well, we'll see about that. Because in the actual practice, I have found that you argue a lot, that you're very argumentative, that you argue with those little eyes and they trap you every time with their little logic and their little demands, and their little this, and their little that, and their little whining, and their petty thoughts. And you buy into it, and the next thing I know, you're down the road, stuck in some horrible state, waiting for somebody to come and hit you in the head with a two-by-four or something. You know, snap you out of it. It's fortunate that I have stock in Warehouser. <laughs> two-by-fours are a dime a dozen. 
no big deal. Of course, I don't have stock in Weyerhaeuser, actually, but it was funny. Okay. Does that answer your question? It does, and thank you. You're welcome.